Hello everyone, I'm Taka Awori, founder and CEO of Bosara Africa, a Pan-African leadership development firm. Welcome to the Leadership in Africa Redefined podcast. This podcast seeks to do two things. One, change the narrative of leadership in Africa, and two, provide concrete strategies and tips for leading in an African context. We do this by interviewing amazing African leaders so that the narrative of leadership in Africa is defined by the best of us, not the worst of us. We share their stories and provide practical suggestions for dealing with the challenges of leading on this continent. We discuss, interrogate, and examine concrete leadership practices that work. We also look at failures that these leaders faced and how they navigated their ways back on track. It's an exciting and empowering space for leaders to thrive and engage. Subscribe to the show to become the leader you have always wanted to be. And if you like the show, be sure you rate it and review it. It helps others to find it. Thanks so much. Welcome to today's episode of Leadership in Africa Redefined, the podcast. I'm really excited to have a special guest with me on the show who is none other than the Honorable Rita Atukwasa, a member of Parliament of Uganda in the 11th Parliament, representing Mbarara City. Honorable Rita, you're welcome. Thank you very much, Tata. It's really exciting to be here to have this conversation with you, but also with our listeners and viewers, wherever you are. Yes, indeed. And so for listeners and viewers, so you know who you're speaking to, Honorable Rita, in addition to being a member of parliament, is a fervent gender activist, public policy analyst, and development sector educator with numerous decades of years experience in promoting social and gender justice. She's made an impact in the lives of women in Uganda around issues as gender-based violence, women's leadership and particularly working with Uganda's market women and working with women in the areas of conflict. She was a member of women, the women's situation room in Uganda that advocated for peace processes before and during and after elections, establishing the first women led election observers in Uganda. So among many other things who you have before you, Honorable Rita, is a woman who has clearly dedicated her professional life to making a difference to the lives of women in Uganda and now the men and women and young people in her constituency. So in other words, Honorable Rita is an example of the leadership in Africa we want to learn from and emulate. So again, Rita, you're welcome. Now, is it okay for me to call you Rita? I don't have to say the Honorable. Yes, yes. No, I feel wonderful. (laughs) <laughs> oh, okay, fantastic. Yeah. So how are things in Parliament right, right now? What's, What's keeping you keeping all busy? busy? Yeah, Parliament is a very interesting place, especially for me that I have always friends to be there. And very interesting in a challenging way because sometimes the things you think you are able to change doesn't just happen by a snap of a finger. It's a process. It involves engagement. Sometimes it also involves people misunderstanding you and, and being able to, yes, so you must be able to navigate all those challenges, but also grab the opportunities and you're able to be where you want to see the change you want to make. So parliament is a good place. And I think it is a place for women, for us to be there and change. Learn from dignity. And learn from that. Yeah. And maybe you are bringing me to the, the first question I would, I would pose for you is one of the things I write in my book is that the political space is probably one of the hardest spaces to exercise good leadership. And I think you've already intimated at that. Huh? So, so given that, how would you define good leadership in this political space, you know, in the space of elected officials such as yourself, whether at a national level, at a at a decentralized level, what are those elements of what makes somebody a good leader in this political space? Of course, there is controversy 
uh, when you talk about the political space and all the conversations we do speak about um, in the feminist movement, uh, feminist kind of leadership, there's a bit of, uh, of controversy in there. In terms of what is the leadership kind that makes you effective right now, politically as a leader, and what is it you would want, kind of leader you would want to aspire to be? There's a big difference in those two. For instance, in, in politics, how would you best be a political leader, successful female one, without using power against people? It's very, very challenging, but it is possible. Because when you look uh, at parliament and other political spaces, the people you are interfaced with that always are looking for they are too fault finding and equally setting up traps. When you are a leader and especially a woman, are usually the man. Because men never happy to be in the same space where you are. Apart from a few that have embraced that. They usually want to see us with an eye for competitiveness. Because political space is very competitive. Yes. So therefore, not all people will be able to say, oh, it is a woman, we need a woman here. No, you must fight your way to clear the space and sit at the table. If I may use this analogy, sure. if it is a dining table and it has four chairs and you find it full, but then you're hungry and you want to sit at that dining table. Will people willingly create more space because he's in and you sit at the table? Or will you be able to trounce one of them and sit at the table? That is how politics mm. is right now. So interesting. And, and sorry to interrupt you, but I want to riff on because I love your analogy and love it. And I want to riff on it a bit. Huh? So assuming you do come to the table and you get somebody to move out, you know, through a process where your constituency people have voted for you. Now you're sitting at the table. Now, you know how at a table, particularly as Africans, we have a sense of ah, you, you're eating with bad manners. Well, he eats very well. So what does it mean, whether you're a woman or whether you're a man, and I fully appreciate some of the real constraints that women face, the systemic, you know, the, the misogyny, the kinds of patriarchy that we face. So I really appreciate how difficult it is to get to that table. But once you get to that table, what does it mean eat with good manners. What does it concretely mean to be a good leader when you are at that table? Definitely at the table of political leadership, you need to rise up to the times. What is affecting the people? Because uh, we are aspired to come to that table by different reasons. I will speak to what brought me to the table. What are the challenges and what is it that I aspire to be able to change? And you mentioned social justice and gender equality and equity. So you should be able to rise at the times. What is it that is affecting the issues that you feel passionate about or you feel affect your community? Mm -hmm. How are you able to connect with the people that you strive to represent and speak of? How do you, how are you able to we look at different sectors to follow those issues. You might not do it across all the sectors. But for instance, if I sit on the Committee of Trade, Tourism, Industry, and Cooperative, that is my cardinal eye. But every day I sit, it is ringing in my mind that I am here to make Uganda better, but more specifically to add the voice of women, to add the voice of girls, to add the voice of the vulnerable. So for me, if they do bring a that is good. I'm trying to analyze what are the traits, what are the roots of exploitation in what is being tabled in front of me. So you must connect with the people. You must understand the issues. Even when you are not from that particular community, how are you able to relate with them? For instance, you know, where I come from, perhaps, female genital mutilation is not there. But there are other practices that equally affect women. So if oh. the issue comes from another region, it's about female genital mutilation, I absolutely can relate. What does it mean? And how does it affect the life 
of a woman. So the ability to understand, yeah, the yeah. issues, relate with them, analyze, be able to get the strands of how different vulnerable groups are affected. And, and yes, because, yes, sorry, go ahead, go ahead. Yeah, so very, very interesting. So when I am looking at issues to do with vulnerable minorities in Mbarara City, one would wonder, how would the Batwa get there? Have a community of Batwa. The Batwa are a minority African group, but also in Uganda. This is one of the groups that has continuously appealed to me to speak for them. And I, when you talk about the elderly, it's another vulnerable group. So when I'm analyzing these issues, I need to dissect beyond the woman's different vulnerable group. Because that's where my inspired head is seen. Hi folks, hope you're enjoying the show. So have you heard about the African Leaders Circle? Our impactful e-learning platform that enables you to grow into the leader you would want to follow? Here is a message to tell you what you need to know. Are you a CEO, executive director, or HR manager that is looking to build a pipeline of leaders that are ready to step up into management roles? Are you looking for a self-paced learning platform that provides your leaders with quality content and does not take them away from their work for too long? Are you looking for a program that enables your managers to move from knowledge acquisition to demonstrable improved practice? Then look no further. Sign them up for the African Leaders Circle today. The African Leaders Circle is an e-learning platform that gives your managers access to an exclusive community of leaders across the continent and a wide range of strategies and tools to stand out. We do this through online courses, discussion forums, a library of resources and a personal learning advisor to support each of your managers to maximize their learning on the platform. To learn more, visit our website www.busara-africa.com. Don't forget to visit our website busara-africa.com to learn more. And now back to the show. So this is what I'm hearing you say, and I think this is so powerful, that for you, good leadership, within this space is about, and I heard the word you use, you said understanding hmm, the needs of your constituency, the people that you represent, paying particular attention, and because this is where your passion is as well, huh? paying particular attention to those who are marginalized, excluded, and you gave some concrete examples from your constituency, and having that lens in whatever national responsibilities that you have. So if you're sitting on the trade committee, as you're working on trade issues, you're looking at it with the, from that lens. Yes. Which therefore brings me to this next question that I often see leaders in this spa space, particular parliamentarians, um, struggling with. Huh? The expectation, and it's a similar principle you would have for leaders in other spaces, how you manage the expectations of your followers. Now, as a parliamentarian, I can hear you have great clarity around you have a national responsibility, but keeping in mind huh, the needs of your constituency. You talk about national responsibility. But when I see the political space, many times the expectations of people for the MP is very much direct impact. You must be at every funeral. You must help with school fees. You know, it's a lot of the social welfare demands. It's almost like that direct development in the constituents. You're expected to do it, not their municipality or local government. So how do you manage that huh? in terms of these competing demands and understanding of what your leadership role is? Uh, first of all, it is very important uh, to be very sincere to, with the people okay. to explain to communicate okay. that not only did I communicate during the day, I have persistently and consistently continued to communicate using the various spaces that are available to me, the mass media, uh, the WhatsApp groups, 
the, the same events, community events that are organized, maybe funeral weddings, but also platforms where some of these people who I really didn't need the courage to move on by the day, one of the people. For instance, I have specifically continued to reach out to the women and the young women that fell victims of unwanted and early pregnancies during COVID. And recently, I had a platform of about 500 of them in cooperation with government partners. Okay. Because where I am seated, I am standing on the ladders on the boots of so many other leaders that have come before you. And those yeah. are still there that have either spoken to platforms where I have been, that have visited my school when I was studying. So I've been deliberate to make sure I would look at those platforms. The schools where young people are, that I'm able to speak to the boys and the girls to impart a sense of greater hope that even when challenges are very difficult, that is not the end. There is a, a, a green light at the end of the tunnel. So I do school programs, school campaigns to be able to explain. And when I meet the woman, when I meet the public, I am very candid to say, I know you want money. I am okay. You would want me to come to the field. Okay, I love it. But I cannot fall like rain. I can tell you that at a go. I love the phone call. So very many phone calls come to us. But for me, the platform, give a voice. You will call me to let me know that you do not have school fees. Very true. I will listen to you. And the conversation will ensue. How have you managed before? Because if I don't want This is what I hear you saying, Bella. Yes. Is that you use the existing platforms to communicate what's realistic to expect of you in that particular leadership role that you're occupying. And so it, in the context of a, a member of parliament, it's saying, I hear you, I represent you in terms of national level, making sure the systems work for you, school fees, why is it you're, you're facing early marriage, those kinds of things. But I love the way you say it, but I can't do everything. I'm not trained. Yes. So that's I'm the, not... the, that's I'm the not... learning I think even yeah, for other always... leaders. The worst for me would be to give to give somebody a promise that I cannot face you. So I that's have, a leadership less of manage expectations. Yes, I have got to be mindful what is it I'm focusing okay. and what is it will I be able to like that. But also to insist and let the people know that I am not a fixer and I am not an angel. I am as human like as they are. The limitations like that. that they face, I face some of those, but I will not fix every I will not like that. But as a lesson, I'm not a fixer, I'm not an angel, I am human. I am human. And I also equally tell them I can also make error. But what is important that when I have errored and it has come to my attention, I am able to express it. Because what happens uh, along the way, sometimes you step on people's name. Sometimes they call and you never receive their calls. Sometimes one who is there to you expected you to be at the event and you cannot. Yeah. So it is to recognize that. How does it help? You know, when I had assumed this office, personally, I used to feel very, very indebted. That if mm -hmm. I had been invited, to be a chief guest, if I had been invited at a function, and sometimes you call far. Rest assured that your calendar is clear on that day. But guess what? National it Reality has quality. Yes. Yeah. Something very important and national importance that even the, the, the effect of it, if it is a legislation and it needs to be tabled and they need your input, that I'm able to make that sacrifice. But I go back and, and explain I couldn't be there. Because one thing that is very dear to me, Taka, is that mm -hmm. when I came into politics, I said I've gone in. Yeah. And when I am done, I do want to remember me. And love that. Yes, I want to and love that. Myself. I want to find my Rita that went into politics and I'll be able to say, or I can be able to survive myself and I reply. <laughs> I 
I don't want to wreck one. I would love to. I love that. And there are a couple of lessons I want to pick out from these powerful things you've said. Huh? Yes. It's one, I'm distilling the, 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 the importance of humility in this type of leadership role. When you say, I, I'm able to tell people I'm fallible, I can make mistakes, I'm really sorry, I was supposed to be the guest of honor, I wasn't able to come. The, so that humility is so important, I'm picking that up from you. The second principle I'm picking up from you is this idea of, there is a Rita beyond the honorable. There's yes. a Rita beyond the title. And it's so important for us as leaders not yes. to get so consumed. Our identity is so wrapped up in yeah. those titles that we have that we forget who we are beyond that. And I love the way you said it. So that after, you know, there will be a time after you'll be able to say, yes. hello, Rita. You know, yes. you're still in the Yes, yes. So yes. And my final yes. question for you, though, yes. because of time, yes. um, and it's really, you, you alluded before to, to, to the, the kinds of difficulties and challenges that women face in politics. Huh? So, so maybe my last question for you is, what advice would you give to a young woman who is considering running for office? What are three things you would say to her to prepare herself for what she's going to face? One is self-awareness. Who are you? What do you stand for? And why are you going with your of it? It's that small thing. The change you want to make. Self -awareness. Be clear on your self-awareness and the change you want to make. Your and that's why are you doing this? Yeah. Okay. Yes, you want to make. Yeah. Number two, leadership spaces are diverse. Okay. They are diverse with great opportunities at different level. Okay. So start where you are. Go oh, and love that. Yeah, start where you are. So don't wait to make a difference when you get into that particular political office. Start right where you are trying to make that change. Huh? Okay. And the third and the last one is what I resolve to work hard towards. I think could be about six or seven years ago that do not be a begging leader. Do not be a begging activist. Do not be a begging uh, human being. Please try to work hard, save, and do invest at whatever level. If you're a leader and you can't even have transport to get yourself from one place to another, it won't make sense. It won't make sense. So if I organize yourself financially. Financially. It is important and it is still important to me. Not that I'm excellent at it, but every day. And I strive. I that. And I and think that's so important. Work. Because when I see leaders make, you know, choices that compromise their principles, it's often because they're in dire straits financially. So so I love that. So self-awareness. And, and the very one. Yes. And yes. Yes. Uh -huh. yeah. Aaron. Uh, we yeah. need to talk to our children about what money means, what should it be used for, and how. How how is it made? How do we earn it? I love that. Love it. So I can even tie that to the third because because I hear the first one: self awareness, be clear on your purpose. Number two: don't wait. There's leadership in so many different spaces. Start where you are. And number three: organize yourself financially. And therefore, even as parents, let's start talking to our children about. Honorable Rita, I could go on and on and on and on and on and on talking with you, but we'll have to pause for now. I really thank you so much. Every time I engage with you, I am reminded why, yes, indeed. There is, you are, you are seed is in me. Oh, <laughs> what she means is I used to be Honorable Rita's coach. That's what yes. it is. It's, uh, 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 uh. It's easy to coach amazing leaders like you are. You just have it within you. Thank you so much. And you haven't desisted to give me more and more. Yeah, I'm always here for you because I'm just so inspired by and I'm great with your boldness. Oh, good, good. Enjoy it and spread it. And I'm glad, I'm so excited to see this type of leadership in the political space. So thank you for being you and who you are. And I wish you all the best. Thank you, Taka. All the best to you too. Hello, wonderful leader. 
Thank you for joining me on this episode of the podcast. I learned a lot and I hope you did too. If you want more of the lessons, experiences and nuggets for effective leadership, join our amazing platform for leaders, the African Leaders Circle. Learn more at www.bosara-africa.com. And if you like the show, don't forget to subscribe and share with other amazing leaders. See you soon. Ciao.